Let's get off this excess glue that was underneath. It has been about 45 minutes since this was glued. So it's set up and ready to use. That happens even after 15 minutes. Of course, if it sits overnight, that's fine too. Just get off that excess glue. That scraper is taking off a good amount of material. It should have a sharp blade. And use the clamps to hold it so you can put both hands on the scraper. If you're not peeling stuff up like that, it's dull or you're not pushing hard enough. don't get with the scraper will chip the knives on the planer so try to clean this up the best you can okay we are now ready to move to squaring the top we're going to scrape any glue clumps which we did and then we're going to plane to 13 16 join one edge table saw the other edge panel saw the two ends to finish it off at 20 by 39. Then we'll move to routing a detail around the outside edge. Now the top looks good. The bottom still has a little bit of scarring on it that did not get planed off. I'm going to choose to leave it like that. Now you can plane the top down more. In fact, you can go all the way to 3 fourths, 0.75 if you would like. And if I went that far, it would probably take this out. But I like a thicker top, so I want to leave it at 13 sixteenths and just put that on the bottom side. So now I'm going to joint this edge. And then I'll table saw this edge, panel saw, panel saw. And my final dimensions will be 20 by 39. going to take a little bit off this end. I've got about an inch extra. set this up to get maximum uh, edges so that I have access to three sides. So I'm hanging it off the corner and clamping it down to the table. That'll make it easier 
to route the edge. Now come over with me to the routers. You can choose one, two, or four. And here's what they look like. They're a little difficult to see. So number one has this round over and then a step and then a cove. And if you make it a little bit deeper, it looks more like this. So you get a step, a round over, a step, and then a little bit of a cove. You can do both of those cuts with this router. Number two is an OG, and it's like a scoop and a round over. Or lower the bit, and it's a step and a cove and a round over. Number four is just a round over, or lower a step and a round over. So depending on which of these you like, choose the router you like. I'm gonna go for number two. And so the base, look across the base there and see how deep that bit is. The way you change it is by unclipping this and then turning and look at the base now and see how it changes the depth. We are not going to start at finished depth. That's finished depth right now. So here is about an eighth of an inch above the base, that step. That's where we're gonna finish. We're actually gonna take three runs. The first one I'll do about there. Then I'll raise it to about there. And then I'll do a final raise to about there. The reason we do three runs is because it makes a better cut when you're taking off less. And number two, you gotta get used to this operation and it's likely you'll mess it up a few times. And by doing it three times, usually by the third time, you know what you're doing. I'm gonna go left to right. So I go this way, that way, and then that way. Then I'll have to spin it around to do the fourth side. I always clamp and use both hands on the router. So I've lowered the blade so that I'm just exposing a little bit. Right, it's only about this much is exposed. This bearing runs along the edge. It comes in and makes contact and keeps it from going too far in. So I've got my left hand, keep it tight. I don't wanna roll it, this is what I don't wanna do. So I'm keeping it flat. I pull the trigger and go in. That looks pretty good. It's a nice cut, but it's still gonna go deeper than that. This is only my first pass. Notice here, I've got a little redness. It's burning. I'm not going fast enough. So I'm gonna come back here in the corner and, and touch a little closer. I'll come all the way to here. And then this is always a little tricky, getting around a corner. Keep it flat and then just roll it around.
show you this corner I missed. It came around and the bearing came off and then went back down and look how it left this kind of a sharp edge. It's not rounded completely. So I had to come back and redo that. Okay, so now it's the second pass. So I'm gonna lower the, the bit about an eighth of an inch. This isn't my final pass yet. I'll do the same thing. I'll take these three edges, then flip it. So I missed this one on purpose. See how it's all square right here? It should be rounded. And it's kind of got this wiggly. So I came out around and I wasn't careful bringing that bit. I'm going to do it again. There, clean that up. And I can run some sandpaper over it too. And notice the step now. It looks better than it did before, but I still got one more pass. Now for the final pass. I'm gonna raise that bit up so that the step is about an eighth of an inch here. Of course, you can raise or lower your bit as much as you want, depending on your liking. And if you don't know what you like, then get a piece of scrap wood from the shorts bin or from the garbage can and do a route on that. See if you like it. And then do it accordingly. So this is my third pass. I'm going to go try to be more careful so I get all my corners good. Um, my router speed can be varied from one to five, six. I like to be somewhere in the middle, about three, three and a half-ish around there.